Now, all cults, all fraternities, all churches, all denominations have their symbols. We know the symbols and we know that what we're looking at, whether it's a church, a synagogue, a mosque, whether it's a policeman, or whether it's a fireman, or whether it's a nurse. We know things by their symbols. So fascism, what are the symbols of fascism? One might think it's the swastika. Actually, it is not. The symbols of international fascism are much older than that. And the key symbol, the cardinal symbol of the fascist movements of the world, is a bundle of rods with a hatchet in the middle of them. This is called the fasce, or the fasces. It's an old Roman symbol, but it even predates the Romans. Where do we find it? On the back of the Congress room. The Freemasonic monopoly of government positions continued for at least the first hundred years of United States history. According to a 1924 census, even in that year, the Senate had a membership which was 60% Freemason. But what worries me more is why, of all the symbols that you could possibly choose, the symbols for international fascism are there in the Senate room at the back. Now, James W. Wardner, in his book on Holy Alliances, says, Our first president was a Mason, sworn into office by the Grand Master of New York on a Bible taken from a Masonic altar, that of St. John's Lodge No. 1. The Bible used in the ceremony was brought there by John Morton, Marshal of the Day from St. John's Lodge of which he was the worshipful master. Thus was laid the cornerstone of our country and forever of our government. This same Bible, used for Washington's inauguration, was used to swear in Masonic presidents Warren Harding in 1921 and Dwight Eisenhower in 1953.